Hey everyone, TPS Miner here. Welcome back to the TPS Miner channel. It's been a little over a week since our last video, and I'm happy to say I was able to take the family uh, on a little vacation, get away, so everyone could recharge their batteries. Uh, so we're back, and we're going to jump right into it today, and we're going to talk about this RX 470 4 gigabyte Sapphire mining graphics card. So I picked this up from Nerd Gears, and let's take a look here. So uh, it's the Sapphire RX 470 4 gigabyte mining graphics card, grade D. Uh, $174.95. I was a little concerned. Um, first, the price is a little higher than what I wanted to pay. And I was a little concerned about the grading of this, um, you know, getting something that maybe wouldn't be uh, in great condition. But I went ahead and rolled the dice. This is something I've been wanting to get my hands on. Uh, Bitsby Trippin did a video on these. Uh, I think it was back in December. And these are beast graphics cards on Ethereum Classic. So I went ahead and picked this guy up. I rolled the dice and we got it and it was in pretty good shape. So I'm going to show you the card here shortly and let's jump back. Uh, they do have a 30 day free return policy on these. So what I did is when I got this graphics card, I put it into a rig without doing anything to it. So I wanted to test it out before I touched anything just to make sure it was still working. So it works. We're getting 30.43 mega hash on Ethereum Classic at 68 watts at the wall or uh, in software. So at the wall, we're probably closer to 82, 85 maybe. Uh, I haven't measured exactly, but uh, definitely not 68 watts. So I'm happy with the performance, but you can see it's getting hot. So now that we know it works, we're going to go ahead and take this out of the rig. We're going to open it up. We're going to change the thermal paste. We're going to repad it and put it back and see if, uh, if we can get this temperature to come down and see if we can get a little bit of a higher hash rate. Maybe we can push it a little harder once the temperatures come down. You can see relative to the rest of the cards, uh, I do have a 6600 XT, which I did pick up on vacation, um, is sitting at 39 degrees, 41 on my 6600. And the 580s are at 39 and 49 degrees respectively. So again, this 65 degrees is very much out of family. So let's shut it down. Let's take it out of the rig. Let's repad it, repaste it, and see what it looks like. Okay, we've got the card out of the rig. And let's just take a quick look at the card. So again, it is the Sapphire Nitro 4 gigabyte mining GPU. And if you look at the IO uh, side of the card, it's got the IO shield on it. But if you take a closer look, you'll see that there are no ports. So this cannot be connected to any sort of video out. So this, uh, this is just to be able to hang the GPU or to mount the GPU in a rig. So looking over the card, uh, it didn't look like it was in bad shape. In fact, it looks like it was in pretty good shape considering uh, that it was rated a D by Nerd Gears. But we're going to go ahead and open it up and we'll see what's on the inside. But again, uh, generally speaking, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. I did notice some corrosion on the, um, on the radiator inside. But uh, let's open it up and we'll see what it looks like inside. So this is the first time I've ever repadded or repasted a card. So this will be a learning experience for all of us. We've got the four center screws, and then we've got a bunch of these on the outside. And these are all, these are interesting, they're spring loaded. There's a, a spring on each of these screws. See if we can get that to focus. There we go. Okay, that should be all of the screws and uh, you can see the corrosion that I was talking about here uh, and a little bit on the other areas of the surface of the card but for the most part it's not too bad. All right, so we got everything apart and right away you can see all of the oil that's on the pads and you can't see, but this thermal paste is completely dried up. So 
We're gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up. We're gonna be using 91% IPA to clean that up. We'll uh, remove all of these oily pads, clean up the surface here, and clean up the chip side. And the replacements we're gonna be using, uh, we're gonna be using an Arctic thermal pad, uh, 1.5 millimeter. Uh, pick these up at uh, Micro Center. And for the paste, we'll be using the MX4 Arctic also picked up from Micro Center. So let's go ahead and get this cleaned up and uh, we'll come back when we're all cleaned up and ready to go. Okay, so we got everything cleaned off and uh, you can see there's almost an oil stain. I, I really scrubbed this and just can't get this stain off. But uh, we're good there. And then the same thing on the board. You know, you can see the oil or the stain on the board. I used a lot of IPA, uh, prep wipes, swabs, and I just can't get those stains to go away. So um, we went ahead and we cut out all of the different size uh, pieces that we're going to need for the thermal pads. And I did notice after I started cleaning, there are four chips over here that also had pads on them. So I removed those, cleaned these, and I cut these small little pieces here. So I'm just using a pair of tweezers to apply those. And we'll go ahead and get everything padded. And I'll come back and we'll do the paste together. So we're down to the last pad. And I did want to point something out real quickly uh, while we're doing this. If you've never repadded a GPU before, uh, before you apply the pad, you need to remove the thin plastic that is over top of the pad. So we're gonna remove this from the last one and we will apply the last pad onto the board. And we're good. So we've got all of the old pads removed, cleaned, replaced. And now the last thing we're gonna do is we're going to do our thermal paste. And all you need here is just a small pea size, a small pea size amount. Let's get this debris and fod out of here. Okay. Okay. So you just need a small pea-sized amount in the center. And that's probably even too much. And then we'll take our spatula and we're just gonna paint this across and cover everything. And this will give us good thermal conductivity all the way out to the radiator. And that's it. So again, we'll now go ahead and let's get this stuff out of the way. And now that we've got the pads and the paste in place, we can go ahead and put the radiator back into place gently, making sure not to create too much of a smudge or a smear across anything. And we'll just gently push this down into place. And everything seems to be fitting very nicely. And then we'll roll the cover back over. So now everything neatly together. Let's flip it back over. Let's get all of our screws back in place and test it out. 
All right, so when we're putting the screws in, we want to put these in back in in a diagonal pattern. And you want to make sure not to over tighten. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get them all started and threaded. And then we'll go back and tighten them in a, uh, a cross pattern, similar to what you would do if you were changing your tire. Um, you don't want to over tighten them in a circle. You want to snug them down in a cross pattern. So we'll start with this one. And again, not to over tighten, just, uh, just enough so that they're firmly in place. Okay. And finish the cross pattern. And then we'll go ahead and finish all of the screws around the edges. Get this back in the rig and I will meet you guys back in the computer. Okay, so the card is back in the rig and you can see we didn't really see a whole lot of benefit from the repad and the repaste. So we were at 65 degrees C before. Uh, we're down to 61 degrees C now, so about a four degree change. Um, so again, unfortunately not as much as I had hoped, but I feel better knowing that uh, we've got it cleaned up. We've got the clean pads, the new pads, the new paste. Um, there are some other things we can work on to try and uh, improve the temperature. Maybe we change the placement of the card, get some better airflow over the rig. Uh, so again, some other options, but uh, again, I feel better about it. All right, so let's real quickly take a look at what to mine and see what kind of uh, profits we're getting from this card. So we're at 30.44 30 mega hash at 68 watts in software. Uh, I'm gonna say for the purposes of what to mine that we're at 30.44 and I'm gonna assume we're at about 60 watts at the wall because I think that's a bit more accurate. And we can see that Ethereum Classic our revenue before electricity is 72 cents per day. Let's check here. Let me change this to 11 cents to reflect my power. Recalculate. So we're at 72 cents profit per day on Ethereum Classic and 51 cents per day profit after electricity. So 50 cents per day, the card was $175. So it's going to take us almost a full year to... Um, to break even on that card. But let's take a look at Ethereum Classic. So today we're at $27.61. And if we look at the one year, you know, just like everything else in the market, we're, uh, we're down right now. So is it possible that we get back to that $50 range that we were at in October, November timeframe? I don't know, I hope so. Uh, that'll make the payoff time a little shorter. And will we ever get back to the, the all-time high at $134? Boy, that would be great. I would, uh, I'd be really happy with that. So uh, again, just uh, a quick recap of where Ethereum Classic stands right now. I am somewhat bullish on Ethereum Classic, just my own personal opinion, not financial advice. And I will be doing a video shortly uh, in the coming days or weeks talking about why I'm so bullish on Ethereum Classic. So stay tuned for that. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, uh, please hit the like button, give us a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing to the channel, hit that notification bell to be notified of future content. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I uh, hope you have a great rest of your day and I look forward to seeing you again real soon.